Hey YouTube, what you know good? He is the Reverend, this is Project KNM, and we're back with some more fresh art goodness. So, what are we working on today? Well, today is drawing 11 for OC Tober 2020, where I draw original characters of my own, as well as some made by friends, comrades, and fellow artists. This one is, well, it's a little weird. This is going to be a drawing of a harpy-esque monster girl who resided on a deserted island. I've actually drawn this one in the past, and that wasn't an attempt to actually remember what it looked like. Now, what do I mean by that? This OC is not even properly fleshed out in comparison like many others that I've drawn. In fact, to a degree, it's not a quote-unquote character at all. At least not yet. I mean, I wasn't even trying to make this one. It just kind of happened. This harpy, no joke, is the result of a dream. A dream that I thought was pretty funny, and upon working, making a scenario out of that dream, I decided to just roll with it. So, in this video, you're going to get a glimpse of just you know, kind of how my mind works during those times when I can actually remember my dreams, <laughs> as well as just how stupid my ideas can be. When, uh, when I did, when I did these um, comedic what-if scenarios with my friends and I, uh, basically self-insert sitcom situations, really. Uh, now, before I start talking about this little story, a quick explanation for the sake of context of why I was writing these things. See, back in high school, I had this idea of some just goofy, comedic flash fictions just inspired by a friend of mine. Um, see, during freshman year, he told me of this random idea he had. I think it was actually from a dream of his own. Uh, the school was under attack by some unknown creatures just like ransacking the place. Just a bunch of them, just like a stampede of these animals busting through everything. The teachers, the faculty, the, the, the staff, they had no idea what these were. It just seemed like the only thing that they wanted to do was find anybody alive and just run them over. I'm just, just, just trample them, just give them the Lion King treatment. For the longest, you don't see what it is, but what you do know is that at anybody who wasn't hiding in a closet or a classroom, anyone who's in the hallway is effed. So when the um, when the faculty could just no longer keep the doors locked and barricaded, you know, the, the, we're running out of wood, the barricades aren't working, the locks are broken, eventually these creatures bust through the doors of the classrooms, we finally see what in the world's attacking us. And it was a buttload of chocobos from Final Fantasy. <laughs> It's just random goofiness like this type of story that just inspired like just, just a flood of like random ideas in my head during high school. Um, and I just started writing some of these down where me and my three, later four, friends at the time uh, would just uh, have just some weirdness happen that we would have to deal with. Sometimes in school, sometimes at our houses. Just think, think of like just a bunch of like zany sitcom scenarios and you'll kind of get a the idea in my head. Um, eventually, I would take the I, the ideas, uh, the idea of like interacting with like licensed characters, like those chocobos, and I ran with it. Had a sort of had a little bit of a series with that too. Uh, mostly just a bunch of random scenarios, but eventually ended up in just some ridiculous fluster cuck that almost wiped out all of existence. <laughs> Uh, but that's another story for another time. Um, the point I was getting is like sometimes these ideas would uh, I'd later discuss with that one friend of mine. Others I would just archive in a binder, just try to make sense of it all later. The following scenario, however, is not one of those. Or at least it didn't start that way. It was a weird mishmash of making sense of a dream that I had. We're also trying to remember just what the heck the dream was referencing because 
almost every time I come up with something, there's gonna be some type of reference in there. If it's one thing that I always seem to have in my head, even if I don't want it in my head, it's just references. I know far too many references. So, here's a scenario that led to the creation of this island harpy, who still doesn't have a name. I, I never did give her a name. Um, anyway, um, imagine the following scenario as you would like a sitcom, and you'll kind of see where this is going. Ready? Here we go. The crew is all at the beach, all five of us, uh, just trying to enjoy the day. Two of us are trying to play volleyball, one of us is trying to build a sandcastle, one of us is just trying to read while staying in the shade, and one is trying to bring food for everybody from the snack bar. I say trying because every single time we're about to do something, the daggone ocean just brings a big old wave to the beach and just wipes us out. It's like nature itself just decided no fun allowed for any of you. No fun, no food, just wetness. And each wave just wipes us out in that order too. The volleyball net and the volleyball, gone. Sandcastle, right when it's about to be completed, gone. The shady spot and the book, which was not waterproof, gone. All the snacks, every single little bit of it, freaking gone. And when the snack, right, right after the snacks were washed away by all the waves, there was like one thing left on the sand, like next to us, and it looked like a, it what looked like an empty bottle. But then we pick it up and take a closer look, and we see it was a, there was a piece of paper inside, and you can probably guess that piece of paper was in fact a treasure map. I mean, it sounds fishy. Chances are it's going to be a waste of our time. But we were all pretty much broke at the time, so we were all willing to find out, because hey, if there's really treasure, we're no longer broke. Go us. Go team. So, <laughs> using what little money we had left, we would rent a boat to head to the, the island depicted on that map, so we could try to find this treasure. And while filling out the paperwork, there's this old employee with like the stereotypical pirate accent, who warns us that if we're going uh, treasure hunting, that we need to be aware and careful of the legendary green-eyed monster. And this was, and while I was writing this all down way back when, when I was trying to remember the dream, this was the point where I finally figured out what the dream was referencing. Sometimes you can't quite remember what in the world you were thinking of, or what that dream was supposed to be, but then you start to think about it, and it's like, drop. There it is. Mm -mm. That, that's what it was. That's what I was thinking of. I was dreaming that one scenario from an episode of Tiny Toons. <laughs> there was an episode of Tiny Toons where uh, the ocean did, you know, throw them a, 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 you know, a map in a bottle, and they, they took a, I think, a, I want to say a pirate ship over to that island, and I think that's, a, and I think that's definitely what's. In it. What I, what I was subconsciously thinking of. Um, I mean, the parts with us are different, of course. The scenario wasn't the exact same. It wasn't. It wasn't one for one. But it became even more obvious what my subconscious was thinking of by the time we got to the island. This is um. This is about the last part that I remember before I know I woke up. Afterwards, like I would start having to piece these things together, and eventually. Um, start finishing it myself by writing it down but um, after we get to the island the first thing we do is we get lost in this big old just mess of palm trees it was like a maze we, we'd end up just going in circles for a bit until we see this harpy we don't know what in the world she's doing it looks like she's kind of like looking for something like frantically darting her head like left and right just kind of circling and we we didn't want to bother her, but we also figured it wouldn't hurt to maybe ask for some directions. So one of us is like, uh, excuse us, uh, we're, we're, we're kind of lost. We're looking for some ground marked with an X. Her response was to tilt her head and ask, eggs? Um, and I was like, no help at all, obviously. So yeah, we were just like, okay, maybe we're just, uh, you know, sorry to bother you, we just leave. <laughs> 
we just keep we eventually do find find our way out of there and we eventually do find that uh x but the the the, uh, the weird part is that after we left that harpy she said she ended up following us around while we searched she was just like right behind us and every now and again she would ask eggs and and i'd be i just have to look at her like no no eggs but she wouldn't leave this is around the part where i wake up and once i realized what i was dreaming and what i was subconsciously referencing i was like okay this was this was too funny not to finish so i pick up where i left off from the dream and i just start finishing up the scenario i clean it up a little bit um and i uh i try to make sense of things that didn't entirely make sense in my head because you know sometimes your dreams are kind of shaky shaky kind of fuzzy and i was trying to figure out how would this story resolve um i ended up telling two friends the story from start to finish and thankfully they both found it kind of funny especially jay uh, who wasn't uh, who wasn't part of that original crew from high school I actually met him at a different high school when I moved um, but he kind of helped make that uh, whole thing with the harpy like an in joke ever because ever because uh, he thought I guess he just thought that that harpy was like funny and like if I do in fact, keep doing these like scenarios that harpy might pop in every now and again like it is a, like a background character um and even now um whenever i draw or share something bird related like on social media um he might pop into the comments section to be like eggs <laughs> it's still funny i'll spare you the rest of the story right now but if if you guys are curious enough just let me know in the comments i'm willing to tell you how it ends and minor spoilers, uh, there actually were some eggs involved. Now that I think about it, you know what I should do? Hmm. You know what I should do? I should totally try whipping up a comic of that. That would take a while, and I'm still in the middle of working on a webcomic right now, but it would be funny. I should totally do that. I'll put that on my to-do list, but, but, but with that said, I think now's a good time to wrap this up. As always, thanks for watching, take it easy, memento mori, and I will catch you all in the next one. Kill the feed.